Hello, friends, and welcome to Money Girl, a podcast that helps you master your money so you can live rich and love the journey. I'm Laura Adams, a personal finance expert and author based in Silicon Valley. You can learn more about me at lauradadams.com. When you visit my site, you can sign up for my email newsletter. I send out a notice when the podcast is live each week with a link to the show notes and audio. You can also check out my tools page to see many of the resources that I recommend to help you earn more, save more, and accomplish more with your money. I'm always adding to that page when I find a new resource that I love. And you can also submit your money question on my contact page. That's exactly how I got inspired for today's topic. I received a question from a show listener named Sharif. He says, I just graduated college and started my first real job with good pay and a 401k that matches up to 3% of my contributions. So I plan on contributing at least that much to get the free money from my employer. If I can invest more, should it go to the 401k or in a Roth IRA instead? Sharif, thanks so much for your question and congrats on your new job. Maybe listeners have also wondered the same thing. Using retirement accounts is a really smart way to save for your future and cut taxes at the same time. But they can be really confusing because they come loaded with rules and limitations. So in this podcast, I'll answer Sharif's question and help you prioritize contributions among different types of retirement accounts depending on your objectives. Leveraging a variety of options allows you to invest as much as possible and to create more financial security. And that's exactly what this podcast is all about. As always, you can find the transcript or the notes for this show, plus loads of additional resources on the topic in the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. Just look for episode number 441 called 401k or IRA, invest in which one first? Not only are there a variety of retirement accounts for individuals, employees, and the self-employed, but most offer a traditional and a Roth option. Additionally, Roth rules for workplace plans are slightly different than Roth rules for IRAs. See why I said it's confusing? Well, don't worry. I'm going to make it really clear so you know exactly what to do by the end of this show. And by the way, if you'd like some clarification on the differences between the accounts that I'm going to be talking about in this show, like 401k, IRA, and traditional and Roth, I created a free one-page PDF download that shows you all the rules. You can get this retirement account comparison chart in the notes for this show on the Money Girl page at quickanddirtytips.com or by texting me. You can text the word retire to the number 33444 and I'll send it to you right away. Again, that's the free retirement account comparison chart that you can get by texting the word retire to the number 33444. Let me start out with a quick review. IRA is short for Individual Retirement Arrangement. You own it as an individual and choose your own investments. It has nothing to do with your employer. For 2016, you can contribute up to $5,500 or $6,500 if you're over age 50. You can contribute that to a traditional IRA, a Roth IRA, or to a combination of them. In other words, you could contribute $2,000 to a traditional IRA and $3,500 to a Roth, but you can't contribute $5,500 to each one because that's the annual limit. Now, retirement plans that you get through work, like a 401k, 403b, 457, or a thrift savings plan, the TSP, that's the option for government employees, These are completely different from IRAs. They're managed by employers only, and they offer a set menu of investment options and require contributions to be deducted out of your paycheck. What's great about many workplace plans is that they also offer a Roth option. So you can even split up contributions between traditional and Roth plans at work as long as you don't exceed the annual limit. For 2016, you can contribute up to $18,000 to a workplace plan or up to $24,000 if you're over age 50. Additionally, if you're self-employed, there are a variety of accounts that you can use, such as a solo 401k a SEP IRA, and a simple IRA. However, most of them do not offer a Roth option. If you want to learn more about retirement accounts when you're self-employed, I have a podcast about that. It's number 422 called Five Retirement Options When You're Self-Employed. 
So how do you choose the right retirement accounts? Well, what's best for you will depend on various factors, such as your income, what's offered by your employer, whether you have self-employment income, how you plan to use the money, whether you want an upfront tax deduction, and what your future tax rate could be. So let's start by discussing the main differences between traditional and Roth accounts so you understand who can have them and what they accomplish for you. Traditional versus Roth is kind of like choosing a Mac or a PC. They're both computers, but have completely different operating systems with their own pros and cons. So here's an overview of the tax differences between these accounts. For a traditional retirement account, such as an IRA or a workplace 401k, allows your investment to grow tax deferred. That means you don't pay tax on your contributions or earnings until they're withdrawn at some point in the future. You generally cannot withdraw money until you reach age 59 and a half without paying income tax plus a 10% early withdrawal penalty. But you must begin taking withdrawals after you turn 70 and a half, unless you have a workplace retirement plan and you're still working. A Roth retirement account works the opposite way. These might include a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k. They allow your investment to grow tax-free. You do pay tax up front on your contributions, but you owe no additional tax on contributions or earnings when you take withdrawals, as long as you've had the account for five years. With a Roth, you're never required to make withdrawals, so you can contribute after age 70 and a half, and your account can grow tax-free for your entire life. The only limitation is that if you exceed an annual income threshold, you become ineligible to make contributions to a Roth IRA. I'll explain more about that in a moment. And if you want more information about how using a traditional or a Roth retirement account would affect your taxes, I recommend that you speak with a tax professional. You can even check out H&R Block's tax calculator at hrblock.com. In addition to taxes, there are other considerations. To know whether you're better off owning investments in a traditional or a Roth retirement account, I'd like you to start by answering three questions. The first question you need to answer to know whether a traditional or a Roth retirement account is best for you is, what's my current income? This is important because there are annual income limits to qualify for a Roth IRA, as I mentioned. However, this is not the case for a Roth account at work or any type of traditional retirement account. So if your income is above the annual allowable limit, you'll be locked out of opening up or contributing to a Roth IRA. Here are the 2016 thresholds for your modified adjusted gross income. If you're married filing jointly, the cutoff is 194,000. So if your household income exceeds that amount, you cannot contribute to a Roth IRA. If you're single or married filing separately and you don't live together, the cutoff is 132,000. And if you're married filing separately but do live together, the cutoff is 10,000. Sharif mentioned that he's well paid and I'm assuming that he's single. So if he makes more than 132,000, he cannot contribute to a Roth IRA. But let's say you already own a Roth IRA and your income goes up and exceeds the annual allowable limit. If that happens, it's no problem. You can continue to own and manage the account as you always have. There's no penalty. You just can't add any new funds to it when you exceed that income threshold. On the other hand, as I mentioned, there is no income limit to qualify for a Roth account at work. So you can have one no matter if you're in an entry-level job or happen to be the highest paid employee in the company. Sharif didn't mention if his 401k includes a Roth option. So I'm going to recommend that he check into that first. Since you can contribute over three times as much to a 401k as you can to an IRA, it gives you the opportunity to save a lot more money. The second question to consider is, is my tax rate likely to be higher or lower in retirement? As I previously mentioned, with any kind of traditional retirement account, you get a tax break by delaying taxes 
until you take withdrawals in retirement. Roth accounts are the opposite. You pay tax up front and then have no tax on withdrawals in retirement. So in order to pay as little tax as possible, consider whether your income tax rate could be lower now relative to when you retire. If you think that you'll be in the same or a higher tax bracket in retirement, choosing a Roth IRA or a Roth at work, if it's available, is best. The idea is that paying tax on Roth contributions up front at a lower rate saves you money. Here are some situations where your tax rate could be higher in retirement than it is today. You're currently in an entry-level job and expect to be earning more in the future. You expect to receive an inheritance in the future. Or you have a hunch that income tax rates for all Americans will escalate over time. But if you're further along in your career and earn more now than you believe you will in retirement, you're generally better off with a traditional IRA or a traditional plan at work. When you take withdrawals in retirement, you'll end up paying less tax if you have a lower tax rate then than you do today. Also, if you have a heavy tax burden from high earned or investment income, making contributions to a traditional retirement account is a smart way to cut that tax liability. You'll get a tax deduction in the year you make traditional retirement contributions, which reduces your current tax bill. The problem with this is none of us really know what will happen in the future, especially if you've got a long way to go until retirement. So if you're not sure about your tax rates, another tip is to diversify by having both traditional and Roth accounts. That way you'll have taxable and non-taxable money to spend in retirement. The third question to consider is, do I want flexibility to tap the account before retirement? Tapping a retirement account before you reach the official retirement age of 59 and a half typically comes with having to pay tax plus a 10% early withdrawal penalty, as I mentioned. While you might think it's unfair to have your wrist slapped, financially speaking, to access your own money, remember that the purpose of a retirement account is to make sure you have funds to spend in retirement, not before. However, there are some exceptions. Roth accounts give you much more flexibility than traditional ones when it comes to taking early withdrawals, and a Roth IRA in particular gives you the most access to your money. Since you make contributions to a Roth on an after-tax basis, you can withdraw them for any reason without owing taxes or a penalty no matter your age. However, if you tap the growth or the earnings on your original contributions, taxes and that early withdrawal penalty will apply. In addition to the three questions I covered, there are other features of traditional and Roth retirement accounts that may be important for your situation. Let's say you earn too much to qualify for a Roth IRA, so you decide to open up a traditional one instead. If you or a spouse also have a retirement account at work, the amount you can deduct for contributions to your traditional IRA may be reduced. You can still put money in the account, but you just may not get the tax benefit. For a summary of all this information, plus more pros and cons of different retirement accounts, I want to encourage you to get my retirement account comparison chart. Again, just text the word RETIRE to the number 33444. I think it will really help you when you see it laid out on one page. If you're like Sharif and want a Roth, find out if you have access to one through your workplace retirement plan. Not only do you avoid the income threshold that we've talked about that comes with a Roth IRA, but you can contribute over three times as much to a 401k as you can to an IRA. So that's where I would invest first, go for a Roth 401k. But if you don't have a Roth at work, or maybe you're self-employed, it's really easy to open up a Roth IRA as long as you don't earn more than the income limits that I mentioned. There are many great places to open a retirement account for individuals or the self-employed, but some of my favorites are Betterment, Motif, Prosper, Scott Trade, and Future Advisor. And I'll put links to these resources in the show notes in the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. And before we go, I want to remind you that a 401k, an IRA, or any kind of retirement account itself is not an investment. It's just a special type of account where you can hold investments if you like. It's like an umbrella that shelters what's underneath from taxes. 
If you're enjoying the show, be sure to share it with a friend or submit a quick five-star review in iTunes. I want to thank Rad Ref, Miri S73, and Love for Life 2007 for their five-star reviews. Rad Ref says, I'm new to the podcast world and recently found you. For a quick look at financial topics and to get headed in the right direction, these podcasts rock. I've passed them on to my young adult children to answer some of their questions, especially about credit and retirement. Keep up the good work, Laura. I look forward to future topics and scanning the archives. Thanks so much, Rad Ref. I really appreciate that. I've been producing the show for almost eight years, and I keep doing it week after week because you guys are so amazing. And as a reminder, you can see the full archive of shows in the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. I definitely recommend listening to the most current shows first and then working your way back. The show is available on many other audio apps in addition to iTunes, such as Stitcher, SoundCloud, and now on Spotify's mobile app. We're really excited about that. A great place to interact with me and many really smart people who are in this community is my private Facebook group called Dominate Your Dollars. To request your invitation, visit Dominate Your Dollars on Facebook or send me a text message for immediate access. Just text dollars to the number 33444. That's D-O-L-L-A-R-S to the number 33444. I look forward to seeing you in the group. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week, courtesy of Money Girl, your guide to a richer life. Mm